potential advances in quantum crypto cracking, the ongoing challenges with Citrix bleed, and NPM packages riddled with malware. For ThreatWire, I'm Darren Kitchen, and this is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. A researcher named Ed Garrick says he's cracked RSA 2048 with a quantum computer, but not everyone's buying it. And here's the kicker. He claims he's done it with commercial hardware that costs less than $1,000. So let's decrypt the details. RSA, the most common public key algorithm globally, has been long considered safe against most types of attacks. Quantum computing, though, poses a looming threat. Uh, historically, the anticipated route to break RSA involved using a quantum algorithm developed by Peter Shore back in the 90s, but no existing quantum computer can achieve this. Yet, Mr. Garrick of Planalto Research in Mountain View, California, claims to have done this with everyday tech you might already have in your pocket. He asserts that he used a commercial cell phone or a typical Linux desktop to crack RSA. Sounds good, too good to be true? Well, Alan Woodward, a computer science professor at England's University of Surrey, agrees. Without clear proof, like factoring an RSA modulus and returning two prime numbers, there's a lot of room for skepticism. And it's not just academia challenging the claim either. Threat Defense directly challenged Garrick on his LinkedIn post, requesting he decrypt a private key. The response was cryptic, citing a publication delay. The paper Garrick shared, QC algorithms, faster calculations of prime numbers, doesn't lean on Shor's algorithm, but poses another quantum mechanics-based system which he claims can run on off-the-shelf hardware. Apparently, the paper is all theory, but experts find it questionable. But here's the big picture. If these claims prove accurate, the implications are massive. Governments and organizations using RSA encryption would be vulnerable to playback attacks. The kinds of computers we use every day would take hundreds of years to crack a key, but quantum computers could do it in days or hours. It's a real concern. Uh, the NSA has been pushing organizations to transition to quantum-resistant algorithms. They estimate the switch needs to be made by 2033. The big players aren't wandering around either. The uh, Chromium project recently adopted a hybrid cryptographic algorithm for Chrome. And cloud giants like Amazon and Microsoft are also getting deep into post-quantum cryptography. As for Garrick's claims, the jury's still out. But the broader move to quantum-resistant encryption is clear. So even if it isn't the real deal, it's yet another nudge towards post-quantum crypto. So what do you think? I'll be kicking around this one in the comments. In last week's episode, we discussed the recent Citrix patch in light of similar VMware exploits, and we expected an uptick in exploits since proof of concept code hit the streets. Today, to put it lightly, the Citrix bleed vulnerability is popping off. Well, patches dropped three weeks ago, the Citrix bleed vulnerability is being exploited in the wild extensively. It can allow an attacker to bypass multi-factor authentication in enterprise networks due to its ability to reveal session tokens, including those acquired through MFA. It's got a severity rating of 9.4 out of 10, so it's no small threat. Security researcher Kevin Beaumont sounded the alarms with a concerning number. Around 20,000 Citrix devices are estimated to have had their session tokens stolen. Beaumont's estimations stem from a honeypot operation he runs, impersonating vulnerable Netscaler devices. Another honeypot operation from Gray Noise noted that exploit attempts increased from 5 to 135 IPs in just five days. Meanwhile, yet another security firm, Shadow Server, reported some 5,500 unpatched devices, far lower than Beaumont's 20,000 estimate, but still quite high for active exploitation. The basic deconstruction of Citrix patches expose the underlying weak points, and for someone with expertise, designing an exploit is nearly trivial. Compounding the issue, there's already proof of concept code circulating, so attackers aren't even starting from a blank slate. On October 24th, Google-owned Mandiant released remediation advice for the affected Citrix products. Operators were given the usual advice, patch devices, rotate creds, scan for breaches. It's been over three weeks since the tax began, so to my fellow admins out there hampered by management, my condolences. As red teamers, we love open source software and getting reverse shells on our targets. What we don't love? Attackers dropping reverse shells on our dev boxes by open source software. 
And unfortunately, that's the story with a recent NPM repo poisoning. A whopping 48 malicious NPM packages have surfaced, each capable of deploying a sneaky reverse shell onto systems. The packages are designed with seemingly legitimate names and contained obfuscated JavaScript that launch reverse shells when installed. The attacker in broad daylight here goes by the GitHub name HKTalent, and surprisingly, 39 of their packages are still available. When installed, the packages spawn a reverse shell to rsh.51pwn.com. Now, this tactic isn't exactly isolated. Recently, two packages on the Python package index posing as localization helpers were found to be carrying Telegram exfiltration payloads. The takeaway here is that attackers poisoning open source software can have knock-on effects further down the supply chain, especially when you take into account all of the various dependencies we rely on as building blocks when developing more complex systems. Security firm Phylus points out that packages like these contain obfuscation to dodge detection, which really emphasizes how important it is to review dependencies and consider the trust we're putting in our open source ecosystems. And with that, I'd like to remind you that ThreatWire is in transition with new and familiar faces on the horizon. Shannon's stepping down, her last episode will be on Tuesday, so if you've migrated your Patreon pledge, now's the time to bring it back to patreon.com slash threatwire to keep getting your perks. Your support over the last 18 years has been so important. We truly couldn't do ad-free content without you, so please consider becoming a patron. I think you're really gonna love what we've got in store for you. Until next time, I'm Darren Kitchen, and I'll see you on the internet.